Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Dave Fanjoy here, and today we're going to talk about adding articulation to a mini using magnets. So here's an example of a gargoyle mini that I've done that with, and you see it's got a torso twist here, nice smooth action. And as I pull this guy apart, you'll see I've done that by installing a metal bushing with a magnet in it, in both sides there. And so it uh, smoothly clicks together and gives you a torso twist action. So we'll talk about how to do that on a Rifleman miniature. So uh, first we need some, uh, some tubing here. I'm using aluminum tubing. I've got two sizes, uh, 3 16th of an inch and 5 32nd of an inch. And uh, you can get this at uh, hobby stores, especially if they specialize in RC kind of things or modeling. And you want to pick uh, two sizes of tubing that actually fit together pretty well. So here I'll show that they very smoothly, uh, one inserts inside the other one. So the smaller one will go into the bigger one, just to see kind of how that uh, works. There we go, and then it kind of rotates nice and smoothly there. So. The idea is for every joint we want to make move, uh, we'll install bushings like this, add some magnets, and then uh, that's how it'll go. So in order to get started, uh, we need to actually make some cuts. I've done the first one here. You can see I've taken the left arm off. I'm also going to take the right arm off and uh, cut at the torso. And I'm going to do that uh, with my jeweler's saw. So it's a very uh, fine blade. You can use this. Uh, you can do this with any tool that you have that'll make a cut. But you want to be careful uh, to try to minimize. Uh, obviously, you don't want to cut yourself, but you don't want to cut more of the mini than you intend. And that's why the jeweler saw is pretty pretty handy. The blade's really small, and you can get it in there without accidentally nicking uh, an arm or part of the torso. So uh, I'll put it in here and make a cut. Go through here. Uh, you can do this with metal miniatures too. The plastic is really nice and easy to work with, but I've done this with Ironwood Metals, uh, Relatium miniatures as well. Uh, it works just fine. So here we go. Uh, we cut the arm off, and uh, then you'll want to take the arm and clean it up a little bit with a hobby knife. So let me pull this off. Real quick, and you can see there's a little bit of uh, birds there, and it's not all the way smooth. It's a little bit flat, so I'll kind of trim it up a little bit and get rid of some of the excess and try to make it smooth. It doesn't have to be smooth since we're going to install the bushing. It's just a little bit easier to deal with. It's a little bit more on the smooth side. So do this. Be very careful not to cut yourself. Get that off. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of buildup here uh, from the, uh, the saw. We're going to kind of want to uh, pick that off. It does that a little bit less on the metal miniatures and the plastic. It kind of builds up some more. So you kind of carefully cut that off. So let's see, get that, get that done here. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to get the uh, the rough edges off so it can move move uh, smoothly and doesn't get in the way of anything else that you're doing. I guess so let me get this a little bit more. There we go, that should be pretty good. Uh, let me make the torso cut here, and again, I'll fast forward a little bit. So once you get it set, and you're sure the blade isn't gonna cut anything else, go ahead and make these cuts here. There we go. Carefully take the torso off, and again, you're gonna wanna clean up those joints. And now we'll move on to the articulation part. So I've made a little pilot hole here, and I'm going to use my drill bit that's 3 16th of an inch, the same size as the pipe. Set it in there. Give it a couple, a couple things. We'll see it's at about in the middle. It's close enough. And then I'm going to go. Backing out from time to time to make sure that uh, 
it's relatively straight and you don't want to you don't want to go through, through so far it comes out the bottom but a, a deeper hole is better than not all right there we go it should be plenty deep So next, uh, for the arms, I'm gonna drill a little pilot hole here. So that's gonna make it easier for the big drill bit to work. I probably should have done that on the last one, but I was able to pull it off without a pilot hole. Uh, and getting a little bit off center. So here we are making the little drill holes here. And once that's mostly sunny, probably close enough. And part of the problem here is you can kind of see what's going on here. This uh, uh, rifleman arm here, it was built as more than one piece. And uh, since I kind of cut it off, I'm now dealing with the two different pieces of plastic from the factory and the glue that holds them together. Anyway, once you have the pilot hole, you have the uh, uh, 5 30 seconds drill bit here. You kind of set it in the pilot hole. You're ready, get it nice and straight. Make sure it's lined up here. So the main thing I don't want to do is I don't want to have my fingers too much on the barrels because then if it kicks I might break a barrel and then I would be sad. All this drilling and making wonky holes is easy to fix with green stuff. I don't want to go too deep, but I need it deeper than that, so I put it in there, let the power drill go, and that looks about, about right, and get the other one. Same thing, I'm going to set the point in the pilot hole, uh, brace with my fingers, but not on the barrels, start it nice and slow till it catches, and then pick up the speed a little bit, and back it out every so often, That's about as deep as I need. Alright, so we're going to take the 3 16 inch tubing and insert it in there to make sure it fits. Uh, we want to cut it off as smooth as possible. Uh, we want to see if it fits in there nice and snug. Before I do that, I want to have um, the magnet in here first. And what I want to point out is the magnets, let me get one, one of these out. So this is going to be the, the 3 16th inch or the, the fatter magnets. So the magnets here, there we go. Uh, the magnets here are about the same, um, the same diameter as this. So we're going to put a magnet in and put the bushing in on top of it. Uh, the reason I don't want the magnet to fit inside here is I don't want there to be any chance that the other magnet pulls this one out. So the procedure is going to be stick a magnet in there, stick a bushing in there uh, to measure it, cut it off and get it flat. And that'll give like a nice, uh, firm, solid uh, sleeve for it to rotate in. Now you could skip the bushing all together, I guess, and just stick a magnet in there. Uh, the problem is even with the, the metal miniatures and certainly the plastic ones, there's kind of some play in there and it gets a little bit loose and over time it'll kind of wear and, and just not hold together as well. Uh, so the metal is basically what's going to give you the strength. So now we need to glue things in there and the best way to do that is to use CA glue but give it a little base of uh, green stuff. So we'll mix some of that up if you're familiar and uh, we'll start it out with that. Yeah, that's, that's possibly going to be good. Alright, so stick that down in there. I have a uh, I've got a, a little uh, putty modeling tool here that I'm going to use to kind of crush it down in there. Uh, same tool I can use to scoop it out if I decide I've got too much in there. Which, again, this looks like it should be good. Alright, and so the next part is to get ready to stick the magnet down there. The best way to get one off the stack, I find, is to use a knife. And you're not, you're not cutting it, you're just using it to separate the two... Uh, the two magnets and you're also not going to lose it when it's sitting there on uh, on your blade. Alright, 
So yeah, you can test to see that uh, the magnet's gonna fit in here. You can see there's a little bit of play, it wiggles around. That's actually good because right now, when you squish this down in here, if there's air trapped in there, it's gonna make it hard to push this all the way down. So the fact there's a little bit of play will help you uh, uh, get the air out. All right, so uh, to actually install it, um, put the magnet on here. <laughs> you see, that's like a magic trick, check this out. I'm gonna try to put it there, and then it stays out. All right, so really, I just put my finger there, and then you've got a magnet in there. Uh, you wanna chunk it down in there. Uh, this tool seems like it would be great. It's terrible, because this is a metal tool. So what you, or sorry, a ferrous tool. Uh, so I usually use my aluminum tubing, and use that to kind of push that down in there. Uh, pretty hard because you want to you want to get really good contact if you can with that green stuff that I put in there to begin with uh, to hold it in there. Okay. Now while that's drying, which actually to be honest, it's going to take about three hours to be all the way dry, but that won't stop us from carrying on. So next uh, for the bushing, we got to mark how much we need. Easiest way to do that is to uh, put it in there. My camera's getting in the way here. Uh, put it in there about like how you want it and mark, put a mark on it that's uh, flush with it. So the way I did this right now, let's see if you can get this to focus here. Uh, it looks like my mark's not even all the way even, which we'll deal with that in a little bit. The more flat and even you can have the uh, uh, the bushing and the magnets, uh, the easier your torso twisting action will, will go. So push on that, get a little bit more even. Okay, uh, so next is I need to um, I need to, to cut the material at a length about like that. So let's see. I think. Yeah, for this one, it's important to actually use the miter box, so I'll get that out and show you how that works. So I'm actually going to cut the tubing uh, with the razor saw. And I'm going to do it with the miter box to make sure that I get uh, a nice even cut. So how that works is uh, you place the, you know, the piece that you want uh, in one of these grooves to kind of hold it flat, whichever one is about the right size. So. There's a little bit of play in here in the box, you can kind of see this, so it's possible to wiggle the saw and get some angle to it. So you want to try to, to press it against one side of the, of the groove, and then line it up on the hole there, and about like that, and then start sawing back and forth a little bit. It's about that much cutting should be all that it takes. There we go. All right. Move the miter box again. And so now you've got this little metal bushing. So you're going to want to have the X-Acto knife. Oops, my other magnets are coming along for the ride now. Um, you have the X-Acto knife and you're going to go deburr it. So you can see there's like a bunch of uh, jagged pieces here. So um, kind of scrape those off. We'll get more of them off later. All right, there's your bushing. Let's test to see if it works. Drop it in there and it's pretty good. I'm not going to complain about that. So uh, now we got the busher, bushing. We need to install it. Um, if there's a lot of play there, it's good to use uh, uh, some more green stuff around the edge. So if your drill bit is a little bit too big, uh, I think mine's just about right. So we're going to use the CA glue for that. So rather than squirt it in there, because I would really like to avoid getting glue on the surface of the magnet, I want that to remain nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the CA glue on a toothpick and kind of rub it around the edge just a little bit and then set the bushing into that. 
Okay, and now we'll carefully get one drop of CA glue on the toothpick here. And it's uh, about as much as we need. If we need more, we can add a little bit more later. Then we'll uh, carefully work the glue around uh, the inside wall where the bushing will go. Again, trying our best not to get any on the magnet. There we go, CA glue in there. Bushing should slide right in there, and there you go. Alright, so now I've installed uh, the outer bushings on both of the arms of the torso. Um, so next we're going to start working on uh, the inner bushings. With thin bushings, uh, we'll take a slightly different approach to them. There's the thin size. This is the, uh, was it five thirty seconds? Yeah. Okay, so on the thin bushings, we actually are going to seat the magnet right inside here, but we're going to do it after we install the metal tubing in there uh, for a couple different reasons that I'll get into in a minute. So the first thing to do is first make sure your tubing actually fits in these bushings nice and gently because they're still glue drying in these. Nice and gentle. There we go. So these, these bushings are going to work. Um, so we need to install these in here. Uh, magnet doesn't go down there, it's going to go up in here this time. So we just need to mark off these. And these ones we're not trying to get it flush. They need to fill the, the depth of this and come out far enough to go into whatever hole it's supposed to go into. So this requires a little bit more uh, concentration. So in this case, uh, I can actually mark how deep it is. And I'm not marking this because that's where I'm going to put my cut. It's an important thing. I'm marking it just so I can get a sense of how deep it is. And it looks like that first hole is about that deep. And what we're going to do to measure these is uh, basically check the depth of both sides, mark that, and kind of add it together to get a sense of about how long it is. Now you could measure these with a caliper if you wanted to, to get the length of both marks and add them together properly, but I'm just going to eyeball it because you can actually get it close enough that way. And if it's a little bit too long, you can file it off. And if it's a little bit too short, it doesn't have to sink all the way into the upper part of the torso. Okay, so now I'm going to cut it on this mark uh, that I just made. So I'll put it here and we'll do this and fast forward a little bit so you don't have to watch me sit there and cut. Alright, and once we have the cut done, uh, we'll go ahead and deburr it and uh, try to make it a little bit uh, more smooth. Effectively, what we're going to do to glue this one in is I'm going to put it where it's going to go, uh, get the glue in this piece, and then uh, kind of split it down like that, and then put the magnet. It'll come out and once it dries. That's when I'll put the magnet in. So that fits in there really nice. Okay, so I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, green stuff again in the bottom there. Uh, this time it's not specifically um, because the hole needs to get filled, it's just because it makes it uh, easier for me to get it set in there, I think. Alright, so a little thing of green stuff, that's too much green stuff, I about half of that. Stick that down there, and this one it doesn't matter if it kind of comes up the middle a little bit, the middle of this pipe I'm going to put in there. Uh, I do want to get a decent amount of CA glue around the edge. Alright. I'll do this to get CA glue all around the edge there. Alright, then I'm placing the, uh, the bushing where it's going to go here, and then basically sinking it down 
onto that. There we go. So at this point, you need to be careful not to mess with that till the glue dries, because if you push it or make it go at an angle, it's not gonna fit. The way we just set it in there, this, this piece, the extension of it, is exactly the size that you need to get it to fit perfectly. And note again that we did not have to measure it particularly precisely in order to do that uh, by following the procedure of measuring the depths and, and kind of eyeballing uh, their addition. Uh, that got it close enough, and if the piece was a little bit too long, we would have filed it at this point. But uh, in general, you should be able to get it on your first shot. Okay, so now we're going to do the interior bushings on the arms. It'll look about like it did on the torso. Uh, here we're going to do the left arm first, and we need to make sure that uh, we're doing each part uh, to keep tracking of which side it is. So it works about the same. We make uh, two different marks so we can get this about the right size, add the links together. Uh, again, I'll do that by eyeballing, like so. Now we'll go ahead and do our cut using a miter box as we did before. So here we go. All right, and now that the cut is done, uh, we'll go ahead and clean that up a little bit. So here we are, we're gonna take the piece out. Now you could uh, actually use a pipe cutter for, for one end of this because it's gonna go in this hole and it doesn't actually need to be smooth. The pipe cutter will round it a little bit. Uh, so if you prefer to do that, you should, but for the other end, uh, leaving it fully open as you get with the saw is probably the best move. So now we'll go and put some uh, green stuff in there in the base. Get a good amount of it in there. And we'll push that down in there. And to work it in a little bit. Use my, my tool to push it in there a little bit more smoothly. Now I'll set it again. Again, we're doing the left arm, so put it in the left shoulder piece all the way in. Next, we need to apply some CA glue around the inside of the joint of where the bushing is going to go. In conjunction with the green stuff, that'll make a, a nice solid joint. So here I am uh, applying it in there, um, getting it all the way around. Put the cap back on my CA. Let me get a little bit more here first. You want to make sure you have a good amount uh, here. Get that in there to make sure it's uh, got some really good coverage. Okay, um, cap back on that. All right, so looks like that's gonna fit in there pretty good. So we'll put it in the left shoulder again. We measured it earlier, we're gonna put it back in and once we get it in there, we'll take the left arm and push it down on it uh, before the CA glue dries. And then we'll very gently back it back out. Next, we'll repeat the whole procedure for the right arm this time. I've already got the uh, green stuff in there. And then I'll go around the interior of the bushing uh, with the CA glue, making sure you've got a decent amount of it up in there. And I've already got... Uh, the bushing sitting in the right shoulder. So, simply same thing, uh, you line it up and then you push it down and get it in there real tight. And then once it's there, you very gently back that out and allow that to dry. And you set that aside to make sure it's thoroughly dry. Next, it's time to start installing the magnets, being mindful of their polarity. If you are good at planning ahead, a way that you might be able to do this is figure out the positive and negative sides of the magnet and mark that somehow before you get started because by the time you've done this what i've done here there's not going to be a convenient way to go test which side is which on there anymore so i came up with a way that i like to use which i'll show you here in a second let's see what i'm up to all right so let me get out the smaller size magnets which we have a lot 
Again, if I let this stick get too close to this, it's gonna suck a magnet in there and I'm not gonna have anything to grab it with to get it back out, so I'm gonna be careful with that. And same thing, I'll pop one off the stack with my blade. Again, it makes me nervous to have the magnet that close to anything because if it gets sucked into one of those bushings that we made, we will probably not be able to get it out without a lot of effort. So the technique I'm going to show you to do this is to use a piece of cellophane as a barrier and get the magnet situated in there and then pop it out and install it inside the interior bushing. So with the plastic wrap in place, I'm going to take this magnet and uh, place it here and let it uh, go in and, and sort itself out and be aligned properly on the other magnet. I'll gently pop it out and set it aside, being careful uh, not to let it fall over. So that magnet is now oriented uh, the way we need it to be. So I'm going to get the glue and in the interior bushing and push it down on it. So here we are again with the CA glue and the toothpick. I find that's the easiest way to do it for control. So I get a generous amount uh, down on there, uh, all the way around. Then I'll gently press this down on there until the magnet is flush with the bottom. There we go, nice and smooth. And you want to make sure that that is dry for sure before you do anything, because if you were to put it in there now, that magnet will probably yank this one out. So you'll have a hard time getting this one, and then it'll get the CA glue everywhere. If you didn't get enough glue on it right now, by the way, that might happen anyway. But now we'll set this aside and do both arms the same way. Now to show you the finished rifleman. So here we have the bushing in the lower torso, and in the upper torso piece we've got uh, both arm bushings, and then uh, the interior bushing in the upper torso. Both arm pieces here uh, each have a post with a magnet in it, and so you should be able to snap it together here should go with a nice click uh, when you get it and uh, then we can put the arms on it should be there and uh, now it should hold together pretty well you can torso twist it or move the arms it'll stay it shouldn't wiggle too much and there you go now you've got your articulated rifleman and you can pose it how you like thanks for watching we certainly hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Check out our website at camospecs.com. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence initiated.